this is uh, Coogan Cassius, Fry from London. We're in uh, Canning Town here. Or have I said it right, Frank? Canning Town, that's Is it, it. Canning Town? Or is it just Canning Town? Canning Town, depends yeah, where you're Canning, from. Canning Town, isn't it? Uh, with me, I've got uh, someone a lot of people were talking about, Frank Bullioni. There's a lot of ways people pronounce your names. You got it right there. You Have I got it right? You got it right there, yeah. Because I hear the ring announcer, Buglioni, <laughs> and Buglioni. This is about a million and one ways to That's pronounce it. your name. So well, just tell I from London how to pronounce your name properly. Buglioni, and it's a, a silent G. That's it. That's it. Um, we're at the TKO here, and I'm going up the wrong way. Oh, you can <laughs> so go that way. You can can you go out that way? Yeah, you can oh, you can. Way. I yeah. thought it was a one way now. Just see that one way sign. Um, I'll just start with a little bit about um, you got a, your fight next week um, at Wembley, 16th of March. Yeah. Um, just talk to me a little bit about how training's going, Frank. Well, I've had a, I've had a good camp for this one. Um, I've had a lot of good varied sparring. Um, I've I've done about over over 20 rounds last week. I've had a few rounds this week, so um, sparring's gone really well. Yeah. Um, with some good strong boys as well, slightly heavier than myself. Which is always nice. I've had a little bit of um, sharp sparring as well with Tom Baker, yeah. sharpening me up, so that's that's good. Um, it's my first six rounder at Wembley, so um, so I've stepped up the rounds. I mean, Mark, he's, he's very good. He always he always prepares you for for the next step before you're even there. So whilst I was on fours, I was always sparring sixes and eights, and now that I'm I'm uh, doing a six round, I've been sparring eights and going towards tens as well. So so I've had a good 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 load of sparring. Obviously, we've been to see all your fights uh, since you turned pro. What um, did you think about becoming a model then? Was that in your career plan? Nah, that has never been my career plan. Seriously, being a model. Nah. Listen, you know I'm not gay. But I'm, <laughs> you know I'm not gay. But listen, you could be a model. I'm not, listen, I'm not just saying that. If if the boxing don't ever work out, which I've got to hope it does, you can always fall back on a modelling career. That's always, that's always. It's nice to have something to fall back on, but. If I fall back on anything with me, uh, me building a van, I like the um, I like the construction game. I like being sort of around and on site with all the men, and uh, I like that sort of that, that way of life in the construction game. What um, what is it that got you into boxing in the first place? Uh, originally, I was I was I was a keen sportsman. I, my dad put me into every sport going, let me sort of uh, choose what I wanted to do. Um, I done swimming from an early age, uh, football, tennis. Um, enjoyed them all, um, but I was always I was always quite small as a as a kid. And I weren't I weren't the strongest. I was always quite fit. I was never the strongest or the biggest. So um, me uh, me dad is uh, his business partner, Lee Erst. He said, "Oh, my boy's doing a little bit of boxing, and he uh, he's really enjoying it. He's just down at Chesham Club doing a little bit with um, a friend of mine. Does your boy fancy coming along, like strengthen him up, yeah. give him a bit of confidence and that?" And I, I jumped at the chance. Um, done a little bit down there, and then really enjoyed it. So I thought I'd join a club. Um, I went down to uh, Wolven Forest, had four fights for them, and then um, wanted to take it to the next le next level, and um, went to Repton about 15, 16. We had a good good amateur career with them. Repton is is reaped in history, isn't it? Yeah, a lot a great. lot of uh, well known yeah. boxers and <coughs> even people like Ray Winston and that. Yeah, as well. yeah. Well, Repson, so, um, well, when I, when I went down there, there was, um, I, I had Ryan Pickard, Daniel Wordman, Gary Barker, all them boys mixing. Um, Danny Appy just, just sort of finished, um, he was coming in and out of the gym. Um, Lee Ballard, all them boys were sort of mixing in that gym. And I was looking at them, looking up to them, aspiring to what they was doing, and eventually got to aspiring them all and um, really sort of fighting alongside them, so it was great. Was you happy with your amateur career? Yeah, yeah, I was very happy with um, my amateur career. I, um, I thought I was always, I was always interested in the pro game more than the amateurs, if that makes sense. I was always watching pro fights, and um, I, I loved, the, I loved the pros. And like me, my old man, he took me to the uh, like York Hall. And, Who did you used to watch when you were younger? Uh, he took me to York Hall. I remember a fight, Matthew Furwell. I remember yeah. Matthew yeah. Furwell fighting. I think it was for the English or the British title, and. Um, he knocked this he knocked this guy out in the eighth round. Mm. It was an unbelievable fight, and I just remember thinking, like, and the atmosphere was was fantastic. We was right in amongst all this support, 
I just remember thinking I want to be a part of something like this. And uh, I always sort of, I, I sort of, I put my style like the pros, and I always wanted to come forward, be exciting, um, throw like a lot of shots. You're, you're, you're a counter puncher shots. as well, do you really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I sort of the, the counter punching all sort of come about when I got onto the, the GB team and uh, bits and pieces I did at the reps, and they were saying we can't always come forward and. Um, you're gonna fight stronger boys, so you gotta learn how to do both. Yeah. And um, they was right. I've, I've, I've been in some fights where I've had to go on the back foot and box and move and win by that way of fighting. And uh, Mark, he's instilled that in me as well, which is evident in the pros. You're always gonna get the stronger fighters that are just suited to that a little bit more, and you got you gotta be a bit more cunning. Well, um, as your relationship with Mark and Jimmy, obviously. I, I never hear any anyone in professional boxing talk any bad words about Mark or Jimmy Tibbs no. ever. Especially, obviously, the people that they trade and have trained. So, yeah. you know, as your relationship with with Mark and Jimmy, I'm assuming that you're more close with Mark. You probably do more work with Mark. Yeah, right? I do. I do. I do. Um, I do more work with Mark. But I mean, like the pair of them, is they like they adopt you into their family. They become almost like family. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to describe the bond that I've, um, I've sort of developed with with a pair of them. I mean, even like Mark, he's, he's um, we, we are really close, and everything everything we do is talked about, and any problems, any little niggles, everything's everything's talked about and spoke about, and it's it's like once you once you shared the problem, it's like it's it's solved, you know. Um, I can't I can't say a bad word about them. I, as you say, no one's no one's got anything bad to say about them. But um, it's, I'm just really happy with the camp I'm with. Um, I couldn't ask for more. Great, great trainers. In your family, you're one of four children. Is that yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. So, what? What? You're the middle one, or well, there isn't a middle one, really, well, is there? But yeah, I'm the younger middle one. Yeah. I've got me uh, my younger brother. Um, he's 19. Myself, and then my sister's 20, 25, 26, and then uh, my older sister, she's. Uh, 32, 33, I think. So. Is, uh, is your other brother into boxing? Well, he likes he likes watching it. Him and all his mates will come down. Like they're the uh, they're the main noise of the, of the group. Yeah. Team Bullion, they call themselves. And uh, they're down they're percent behind me. They're great. They're a great bunch of boys as well. They're always trying to drag me out down a pub. But uh, obviously, when I'm training, I can't. But they are. They're a really good bunch. Um, then I've got all my friends and sort of family that all sort of join in with them as well. So. But um, my brother, no, he's um, he's like he was um, he was bordering on like semi-pro football, and uh, he loves it. he loves his football. Is he? Um, he so you, your dad, obviously, your dad's an absolute ringer for you as well, isn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. He's like a proper younger version, a younger version, an older <laughs> version. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but obviously, sounds like he's had a lot of influence in. You know, shaping your career yeah, of so course, far, yes, yeah. and he will do as well. Yeah, as you go on. Obviously. Yeah, he's always um, he's hundred percent behind me. Um, again, like we uh, we talk everything through and we do everything together. And I think when you do that, you you're a lot stronger. You got someone behind you, and uh, you work through things together. And he's there for me, and I'm I'm there for him as well. So we've uh, got a very good bond. And um, he supported me um, in hard times, but he's been there for the good as well. So that's uh, great. Um, your your weight division is a tough division domestic, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Is that who, who do you, I wouldn't say admire, but you know who, who do you, I wouldn't say even look up to? But there must be someone in that division in this country that you like the style of, or you know you enjoy watching. Yeah, I mean, um, Carl Ford is obviously the best. Yeah. Um, he's one of the best pound for pound in the world, um, in the country. He's, he's, he's a great fighter. Um, and I was fortunately enough. I was, I was in his uh, company a lot on the um, on a GB team up in Sheffield. Yeah. So obviously with Rob McCracken being his trainer. Did you get spar with him? Yeah, I sparred. Yeah. I sparred um, Carl Fortune on a few occasions. Done uh, four or five rounds with him, and uh, he was good. He was he was draining. He used to seem to just sap every bit of energy and strength out of you. He just used to try and wear you down. But um, I learned a lot from him. I learned like the way of um, way of life off him really. He, he used to sit sit down and, and talk to me. I used to pick his brains. He told me so much about being dedicated. Now he dedicated ten years of his life to the professional boxing game. Yeah. And uh, he lives the life 
inside and outside the ring. So when he's out of training, he's still looking after his body, eating the right foods, doing the right things. And he was, uh, he was yeah, he was an inspiration. He was a great fighter as well. And I'm sure he'll continue to do really well. Yeah, I think, I mean, one thing you can say about Carl Fox, that, that term about not ducking fighters, that applies to Carl Fox. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you look at his, his last 10 fights or whatever he's had, it's for everyone. Yeah. Uh, the best in that division. I know yeah. a lot of it was through the Super 6, but listen, he's come out of the Super 6 and he's fight straight after Andre Ward is yeah. against Lucy Bouté. Yeah. You, you know, you've got to give him absolutely all the credit in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, generally I hope he can do it on yeah. the 26th of yeah. May, but he, you know, you, you can't say that about Cole, that he doesn't, he'll no. fight anyone, obviously. Yeah, in, he's in not terms. scared of anything, is he? No. But, um, so, what's your plan now, between now and next week, obviously? Um, well, I just finished training now, so that was, I had a nice little uh, session in the gym today. Um, I'll probably have a, a walk this evening or a run, depending on what Mark, Mark will tell me uh, later, what he wants me to do. And then I'll do, um, I'll do some sprints tomorrow over at Hainal, up the, uh, up the hills. Uh, Billy Morgan, Tom Baker and Dean Byrne will be joining me on them. So that's always good. Like, the team Tibbs, you, I mean, you've got, you got so many good fighters and uh, all the boys are sort of all dedicated and willing to train. It's, there's always like a few of you in the gym. There's always a few of you on the runs. It's, like, it's, a, it's a good little family. What part of North London are you from? Winchmore Hill. Winchmore Hill. What, 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 what's it like around there? I mean, obviously, do you get a lot of support from that from that area as, as well? Yeah, Come like, I mean, look, friends I, I went to school with, like Matt Collett and Nick Sam Fuda, they, uh, they're at all my fights and they bring they bring big support as well. So, like, it's, and I still see all my friends from around the, around the area. I mean, I've got friends I went to school with, played football with, grew up with, they'll come and watch me fight and I've, like, fortunate enough to stay in touch with them and sort of share the experiences with them. You, uh, it's important, isn't it, to, as you're moving up and you're obviously getting more known, not to forget people that you sort of started out with and, and things like that. Cause I yeah, think... I mean, all, the, the boys I've grown up with and the boys I'm friends with now, I've, I can count them on, on one hand and they'll always be my best mates yeah. and they know that and I think we all we all know that so it's, it, I've never sort of uh, never got that to worry about it always bring me down to earth yeah but you, you don't come across to me as someone that would be taken by um, I'm not going to say fame but it does come into it a little bit as you become more recognised you start to see people's different uh, attitudes towards you and you know you know what it's like you see it with other boxers as soon as they start making a name for themselves people are on them you yeah, know of course, yeah. and it's the same with anything that's about any sport or anything in that sort of industry yeah, so, I think you should always remember where you've come from and I think if you, you stick to who you are you're not vulnerable then you stay strong and don't let uh, don't let people influence you only let the right people influence you you can choose like the right company, I think you can't go wrong then. Am I right in thinking you're someone that doesn't, you don't want to milk that limelight? No. Nah. It doesn't seem nah. like you do, it doesn't seem like you're looking to self-promote yourself, if you understand what I mean. Like, nah, lot... it's, I mean, part of boxing, you have to do it, but I've, I like to just do what I do in the ring, and I'm, I'm thankful for all the sport I've got, and I'd like to sort of show my, my appreciation by, by sort of, going and personally talking to people and doing what I do after the fight. I don't want to sort of be in the limelight for, for too much. I want to, want to be there whilst I'm boxing and performing and putting on a show for the people that have come. And then after that, then I'm, I'm back, I'm one of them, enjoying the night with them. What, what, what's, what's the plan now then? Is it, I suppose, I heard somewhere that, or read somewhere, I think that you wanted to get a Southern Area title within the next year. Or 18 months, is that right? Yeah, I'll, obviously, any uh, any opportunities that come my way, I'm going to take them with two hands. Um, but I don't want to I don't want to rush it. I don't want to be at a level where I'm not really ready for, and I'm I'm having to say defend the title against good boys all coming through when I'm when I'm not ready for it. So I want to take my time, and then when I do get to the level. I want to be able to defend it a couple of times, be comfortable, and then move on to the next step. But I'm in no rush uh, in this game. I'm in, I'm in for the long haul.
I've just come up the wrong way. <laughs> oh, look, this is the wrong way here. <laughs> and this bus is going to uh, start, but it's alright, we'll just drive around there. He's a driver under construction, so. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Frank, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to I from London. Um, like I said, usually when we interview you, it's um, post fight, so we're talking always about the fight. But, yeah. I mean, just wanted to get to know you a little bit better. People on iFilm London to uh, see it sort of not a different side of you because you seem to be the same wherever you are. But um, we'll be at Wembley next week anyway to see your full fight. No, thanks very much, Kevin. I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity. Are we going to see? I'll shake your hand now that you've uh, pulled up. Yeah. You ain't driving around down wrong way streets. No, no, that's all right. It's Cannon Town, I'm from Essex, so I'm not really, uh, I'm not really familiar, I am familiar around here, but... What, um, so, yeah, your first six, your first six rounder, um, never early knockout, you looking for it? Oh, to be honest, I'm not going to go out, I'm, I've never gone out looking for, um, for stoppages. I mean, when I fought Ryan Clark, I put the pressure on, and if Tough he went, fight he went. Ryan Clark, wasn't it? It was a very good fight, it was a good learning fight. Um, he was a very tough boy and I think he, he knew that I was going to come out and try and stop him and he got his tactics dead right for surviving. Yeah. Um, I, I won the fight comfortably and he caught me with a couple of shots but I, I took them well and I, I'll learn from that and I won't take them silly shots because when, as you step up then they can hurt you if they catch you with them shots and you're open for them. So um, no, I, know, I know what I've got to do, I know what I've got to learn, learn and work on and um, I'll, I'll take that into the next fight and you'll, you'll see a difference. All right. Well, you join a long list of people that have sat in the seat. There's not a long list. There's about five. <laughs> There's uh, Tony Bellew, Rocky Fielding, Anthony Joshua. So you're in good, good company. Good company to be in there with the fighters, yeah. Yeah. All right, this is Coogan Cassius with Frank Bullioni for iFilm London at the TKO gym. We've just done a little tour of Canning Town. I just want to thank a couple of people. Uh, if that's all right. You too, yeah. Um, Sis Micro, Max Smith, who's um, new on board, and Terry Fletcher at Price Scaffolding, who are doing a great job and sponsoring me, so really appreciate that as well. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Anyone else you want to thank? Kogan, you. I yeah. want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to I film London. speak in my mind. I film London. But listen, we're, doing more, we're, listen, we're, we're going to follow you now. We've, like I said, we've seen all your fights, so we're gonna, we'll be there with you. Don't Lovely. forget us, so. That's it. Don't turn on us. <laughs> if you're late again, though. I'll have Listen, to. You, you and George Groves might be fighting for, for world titles soon, or you and, not soon, but in the future. Yeah. You might be fighting James the Gal one day. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? So don't forget us. That's it. All right. Lovely. Cheers, fellas. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Frank Brioni. You're watching iFilm London, and this is Ones to Watch.